We're here live at a press conference uh, being held by Hamden District Attorney Anthony Colooney regarding a drug, re drug arrest in Springfield, 21,000 packets of heroin. It's about to begin. I'm all set. Good morning and welcome to the Hamden District Attorney's Office. I am uh, very pleased and proud to announce a significant series of arrests that came after a month long investigation in Hamden County. That investigation was led by uh, the Hamden District Attorney's Office, members of my office, as well as the Hamden District Attorney's Massachusetts State Police Unit under the direction of Captain Chris Wilcox, as well as the Springfield Police Department under the direction of Captain Brian Keenan. As a result of uh, yesterday's events, uh, when we had 19 search warrants at seven different locations across Hamden County, mainly in Springfield and West Springfield, we've arrested five individuals responsible for a significant drug, tra drug trafficking organization uh, that was responsible for uh, significant distribution to other mid-level dealers that worked across Hamden County and beyond into the region of Western Massachusetts. Um, members of various police departments yesterday, led by the Massachusetts State Police Detective Unit, executed these various search warrants and arrest warrants across Hamden County and uh, ended up recovering uh, significant evidence that will result in prosecutions uh, through my office in the Hamden County court systems over the next several months. 21,000 bags of heroin, heroin that sits to my left here was recovered. Seven firearms were also recovered, and some $13,000 in cash was also recovered. We're also uh, in the process of executing forfeiture proceedings on 12 motor vehicles, some of which were exotic and are very valuable. That was a part of this drug trafficking operation and were the proceeds of the drug trafficking itself. Um, various addresses in Springfield and West Springfield were the subject of the search warrants yesterday. Uh, fortunately, um, the targets of the investigation were taken into custody without any violent incident, and the members of law enforcement were all safe. Uh, and the operation went smoothly yesterday morning thanks to the Massachusetts State Police, the Springfield Police Department, and the various other organizations that uh, are listed in the press release. Five men were ultimately taken into custody. Joel Pacheco, Luis David Ramirez Perez, Jose Cedeno, John Shooks, and Vincent Lollio on various drug charges which are listed. Uh, many of them are significant trafficking charges that we'll pursue uh, to the fullest extent of the law. Um, we are very pleased about this. This is a, a continued effort by my office, the Massachusetts State Police, the Springfield Police Department, in continuing to chip away at drug distribution in this county. Uh, we're, we're aware each and every day, as you are, of the serious effects of drug distribution as we continue to see tragic drug overdoses and street violence that comes as a result of these drug trafficking operations. Again, this was a significant drug trafficking organization that was supplying other mid-level dealers around this county. Uh, this was the culmination of about a six months long investigation that was really led by members of the Massachusetts State Police attached to my office, as well as the Springfield Police Department. Uh, I want to thank all the organizations that participated, but mainly I want to thank the Springfield Police Department for its continued partnership with my office and with my state police unit, and mainly the Massachusetts State Police and uh, the man to my right, Captain Chris Wilcox, who led this investigation along with all others in this county run by this office. Uh, and I mainly want to thank as well uh, Sergeant Sean Marr, who runs the narcotics unit in this office, uh, who is tenacious and committed and does things lawfully and appropriately all the time. This was, a, this was a, a complicated investigation. And also Trooper Liam Jones, who was the point person, the main investigator for the investigation. Uh, they did a terrific job and we're very, very pleased with the outcome. And now we will continue the investigation and, uh, and begin prosecutions that will go through the, the court system in the, in the coming months. So I'm happy to take any questions. Is this connected to anything, any of the Boston Park groups from yesterday? No, not to my knowledge. These guys getting arraigned today? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's my expectation. I know there was a, there was a, a recent arrest uh, this morning. My expectation, that based on the time, that he will also be arraigned today, but I would expect the other four to, to be in Springfield District Court today. Do you have, do you know anything about the history of Dr. Ollie? It seems like there have been several owners over the years. Has it been the, the site of something like this before? I 
uh, not that I'm aware of in terms of you know law enforcement. Um, I, I don't know if it's if it's had code violations, things like that. But uh, like I said, this investigation has gone on a, for a long period of time, and we know it was one of their central uh, places of operation and you know, sort of the subject of uh, our investigation and what happened yesterday. We're talking about that garage in West Springfield, off of Kimo. These drugs going out to this area, or were they going out further? Was this kind of a stash house of some sorts? Uh, Ryan, mainly this drug trafficking operation was was supplying drug dealers in this area, in this region, all over Hamden County. But I think it's a fair assumption that, like I said, it was more regional. It was going out probably to, 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 to farther uh, places outside of Hamden County as well. That's why that's why I asked about Harper because they had something very similar going on yesterday, where they said that you know it affected places along the eastern seaboard. So. Yeah, I, they're, they're, I, you know, I don't want to make any, any real assumptions, but I think based on what we know historically and, and, and how these things work, there could have been some overlap or intersection between those operations, those drug organizations, but, but mainly that's a separate investigation, separate group of folks to what we have here today. Did some math over the last year in Hamden County, at least through media reports, close to 200,000 bags of heroin has been taken off the street. Is this a dent? Is this a significant dent? And how much is out there? Yeah, I, I would say it's a conservative estimate of what's been taken off the streets. I mean, I, I, in, in my recent memory, I, 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 can, I can think of uh, certainly over 100,000 bags, and that's not considering the smaller cases that don't often at least get on my radar. Um, but this is, this is a dent in the sense that this is a significant amount of heroin. This is 21,000 bags that would have unquestionably ended up in the hands of users and could have resulted in overdoses, in deaths, in tragedies. And these bags end up in the hands of dealers who are protecting their turfs, protecting their operations with street violence. So this is significant in many respects, deeply significant. Uh, but what's, I think, more significant that's not here on this table necessarily is the operation that was broken down yesterday. And that operation, like I said, was a, was a substantial operation providing these drugs to other, other mid-level dealers who were then distributing it to other small dealers and, and to folks who are using the drugs. So the dismantling of the operation is really very, very significant beyond just what's on this table. Were these guys you arrested known to you kind of in the past? Uh, some have records. Uh, some were known to, to, to my office and my prosecutors. Um, but over the course of the investigation, we, we became intimately familiar with their operations, um, the places they go, the places, they, the persons they see, the persons with whom they deal. So. Um, very often these, these are learning experiences as well as uh, operations that result in arrests. Can you talk about any of the other locations that are in Springfield? You said there were several there. There were some residences in Springfield that we knew they were frequenting at least, if not you know, calling home, uh, and those were the subjects of, of the search warrants. The addresses I have here before me, but they're included in, in the press release that you have and we'll get. Okay, so I'm asking about the West Springfield location because that's where I was yesterday. It is kind of a residential area with houses down the end of the street. Did you talk to anyone who lives on that street? Did they have any news or any concern among, you know, have they ever called any concern on that? Yeah. I'm not aware of that. Investigators, uh, as you saw yesterday, there was a number of uh, police officers and troopers out there. There, may have, there might have been conversations. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to, to reveal that if I, if I were aware of specific conversations. We wanted to keep certain witnesses anonymous, at least at this point. Uh, but these kinds of operations, whether they're large like this or they're small, drug trafficking and drug dealing operations affect and sometimes destroy neighborhoods. And uh, you know that's, a, that's an important part of what I do and what police officers do is to identify drug dealers in neighborhoods and get them off the streets because they're, 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 they're rotting those neighborhoods and they're causing discomfort, they're causing a lack of safety and security for good, decent, law-abiding people in places like Springfield and West Springfield and all over this county. Um, so that's what we're focused on. We're focused on improving the quality of life for, for those people making sure they're safe, and this is, this is dangerous in many respects. It kills people in the ways in which it's distributed, and the organizations that work in, 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 uh, in distributing these drugs are dangerous and disruptive to our neighborhoods. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. This is Captain Brian Keenan from the Springfield Police Department, Captain Christopher Wilcox from the Massachusetts State Police Detective Unit. Thank you, Warren.
Do any of you guys want any individual stuff? So much into branding now, yeah. Yeah. I'll keep a safe distance from the money. Yeah. Nice on you, Pat. Yeah, I just want to make sure I can I grab the mic? Yeah. I want that we use for certain specified purposes within that statute, and the police departments also operate by that same statute and how, uh, how they can use that money. It's for law enforcement purposes, uh, you know, typically things like uh, vests and equipment for police officers, other investigations. It has to be uh, used in ways that are consistent with the statute. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, just finished the press conference. DA Galuni just gave us an overview of this drug arrest. Um, 21,000 packets of heroin, $13,000 cash. Uh, called it a substantial drug trafficking operation that's been shut down. And that's the news for now. We're signing off. Thank you for hanging on. I'm Patrick Johnson with the Republicans. Look for an update on MassLive.com pretty shortly.